Hi, and welcome to Soul Church. Our prayer is that this service encourages you wherever you may be in life. Drop us any questions or comments you may have below. We've been hearing so many amazing stories about what God is doing in people's lives, and we'd love to hear yours. Take a second to send your story to stories at soulchurch.com. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the service. God bless. It is in heaven, it is in me. Can we say that again? As it is in heaven, it is in me. The presence of God is so powerful right now. And I'm going to bring a word that I believe is going to bring release. As it is in heaven, it is in you. Whether you are here for the first time, whether you've been here for many years, whether you're a young student, whether you're new to the faith, whether you're still working it all out, whether you are passionate about what God has for you. Maybe some of you have felt like you need healing and it hasn't happened yet. And it's while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting like, seriously, God, how long do I have to wait? Maybe some of you have been waiting for breakthrough in your business area, breakthrough in a relationship, the door seems to keep closing. And you're like, while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. Seriously, God, how long do I need to wait? Some of you might have felt held back by circumstances, by lack of confidence. Maybe you're at a stage in your life and it's like, I don't think, I didn't think my life was going to be as it is right now because maybe you've been held back for whatever reason. Tonight, I declare a spirit of release in this place and that you're going to see release in every single area of your life that you need God to move as it is in heaven, so it is in me. And so tonight, I'm going to bring a message. Pastor John on Vision Sunday talked about the word release and he prophesied it over our year and he took, gave us all a key. And so tonight... The title of this message is The Keys of Release. The Keys of Release. And we're going to speak release into this atmosphere and into our lives tonight. Do you ready to receive the word? I'm Rachel, by the way, if you haven't met me before. I'm passionate about the word of God and I'm passionate about our lives changing as a result. And I want every single one of us to feel closer to God as we leave today. So can you put your hand on your heart? Because Rachel's words won't change, but God's word will. And I'm going to pray that this word speaks directly from his heart through my heart to your heart. So Lord, for every heart that's bad before you, I don't know what's going on in every heart, but you do. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would guide my words to speak your word that's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word that changes and strengthens. Your word that builds. Your word that says, as it is in heaven, so let it be in me and on this earth. So change my heart tonight. Draw me closer to you. May I connect with you in a new way. Open my heart to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you can take your seat, lovely people. Now, as you're sitting... Can you dig in your bag or in your back pocket and find your keys? If you were given one of these or your bunch of door keys or your car keys, if you are privileged enough to be the owner of a home or a room or a car and you need keys, or maybe you've got keys to this building, or maybe you're a caretaker in a building somewhere, but keys speak of ownership, don't they? They speak of ownership, they speak of belonging. And uh, the title of this message is The Keys to Release. And after three, I want you all to take your keys in your hand and we're going to give them a good shake because when we do that, it's speaking release into this atmosphere and that we have the keys to bring release into every area of our lives. So are you ready? The keys of release. Come on, let's jingle those keys. Release is in the air. Release is in the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. So Luke 4, 18, the scripture that Pastor John read, and he sends his love, as uh, I think Steve or someone said earlier, they said, send our love to our church. So if they're watching online, we love you, John and Chantel, and we're proud that you not only lead here, but you're making a difference in the places you visit around the world, and this time Barcelona. And so the scripture John gave was Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. 
Anointed is not just a lovely old-fashioned word. It's a word used to anoint kings and priests for service, that they're set aside, that they're royalty, that they're extra special, that they're ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And that's us. He's anointed me to bring the good news to the poor, to send me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, the oppressed will be set free, and the time of the Lord's favor has come. And we declare again, and as as Pastor John declared, that his anointing is going to bring freedom from captives, whatever it is. It's not just people out there, but in here we need freedom from things, don't we? Because we're human beings that get tied up with all sorts of problems and circumstances and things that happen. As Steve said this morning, sometimes things happen and we feel bound or held back, but it's not our fault. Because sometimes that's the biggest feeling is that it's when you get yourself in that position, you, you down on yourself and wonder why. And you question yourself and you question God. But sometimes he allows these things ha- to happen so he can bring breakthrough on our behalf and show us the key. So he actually wants to see freedom and actually favor of the Lord has come. So I speak favor over your life tonight. It's time for a release of his power and breakthrough on the young and old and whether you are visiting tonight, or like I said earlier, whether you've been coming for a long time, I'm speaking breakthrough and favor and blessing and release into your life. I know there used to be a thing, and when you turn 18, you get the keys, 18 or 21, and you get the keys to the house. You know, it describes ownership, a sense of belonging. A relationship reaches a new level of trust if you're given the keys to your home. You give someone the keys to your home, let yourself in. Um, the guy that was the site manager in Brisbane, in Hillsong in Brisbane, he had this massive, gigantic bunch of keys, and it made him look really important. And he used to hang them around his neck. And sometimes if I needed the key to a room or a cupboard in church, I would go up to him and say, look, can I borrow the keys? And it'd be like these weighty keys, and I could never find which key was for which door. But he knew perfectly which key, which shape fitted which door in that whole massive building, not just because it made him look important, but he actually took real ownership and he looked after the house of God like his own house. Sometimes keys are a symbol of, of, of excitement for something new, opening a door. You know, when you go to a, a hotel, we went away for a night this week, Steve and I, and you unlock that door and you're like, what's that room going to be like? And, and, and the other good thing about keys is you can lock out the people you don't want to come in. You, you lock out the undesirables. And uh, keys also can speak of something that has been locked up for a long time. We've actually got some really good friends of ours that uh, um, they were missionaries when they were newly married, Swedish couple. And they were in the south region of, of Russia And they were giving out Bibles as missionaries, young married couple. And they actually, and I've shared this story before, but it's very powerful. They were um, captured by some Chechen rebels. And they were thrown into a small, dank, dark cell. The guy is six foot something. And he said he could touch the walls with both of his hands when he spread his hands out. There they are, Daniel and Paulina Broling. And they were put in this dark, damp, dark cell, and there was, there was mice, and there were lice, head lice. And she said, Rachel, I was in the same clothes for weeks. Like, all the girls go, oh. Like, for guys, that's okay, kind of. But not for your girls. And they had a bucket of water in the corner, and they had bread and water. And every day, the key would unlock in the door, and they would pull him out and would beat him up. And she never knew whether he was going to come back in alive. But these two, they knew who they were. They knew who their God was. And they, they believed that there was a higher authority that was in control. And they just started worshiping God. And they had a little tiny window and bits of daylight would come through. They would just go to the window and they would speak God's blessing and say that their light has come and, and declare that they were going to be, that all was going to be well. But every day they got a little bit weaker, but they were still, their faith was strong. And then eventually they asked for their rucksack to be thrown into the prison that they'd been carrying with them. And in this rucksack was their Bible that they were so overjoyed to get, a piece of chocolate that they loved, some baby wipes. They, they, they loved the baby wipes. And they opened up a card that Daniel had been given from his sister as they went out on this missionary trip. 
And the scripture was very similar to the one I read at the beginning about captives being released. And I'm sure his sister didn't think for one minute that they'd be literally bound up as captives. So they, he reads the bottom of this birthday, this um, uh, uh, cards that they, she was sending them on their way. And it said, Isaiah 51, 14, soon all you captives will be released imprisonment, starvation, and death will not be your fate. They opened this up and thought, we're okay. God said it. I believe it. They felt like they already had the keys. They, they gave them a new level of, of, of oomph when they were singing these songs and when they were reading the word. But every day they would open up the door and this guy would be beaten up. Thankfully, she was never raped or beaten up. A lot of the people in their party were and she, they managed to get through this five months of being confined, but their spirit was strong. And finally, after five months, after the Swedish embassy had worked together and Christians were praying all over, you can actually Google it and find the story. The last time, the key came in the lock and they were actually led out to freedom. And the dazzling light, they just had to get used to the light and to get strong again. But apart from that, they were strong and well because they had a word from God that they would be released. Now, they are pastoring a church in Bangkok and they've got this authority about them that is incredible. They've got four kids, they're very normal family, and they are very strong in their identity and who God is in their lives. And I believe it's because of what they've been through. Some of you have maybe not been physically imprisoned, but you felt what it is to be trapped. Trapped in a job, trapped in a role, trapped in a marriage, trapped in a situation. Or maybe you felt forbidden to go. Maybe there's doors been closed. But tonight, I want to give us the keys to release. The keys to walking through seemingly closed relationships, seemingly uh, uh, sleepless nights that seem to be peace, seems to be evading you. Whatever it is that you need freedom from tonight, I declare keys to freedom. Are you ready? Our key text Matthew 16, 19, I will give you, this is Jesus speaking, the keys of heaven's kingdom to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. I will give you the keys to the kingdom to release on earth that which is released in heaven. As it is in heaven, so let it be in me. Jesus was speaking to Peter. Peter was the disciple that kept putting his foot in his mouth, kept getting it wrong. He was the fisherman. He was the one who denied Jesus. And Jesus is asking him, Simon Peter, who do you say that I am? Who, the, who do others say that I am? And this statement that Peter made was the turning point in him getting the keys to the kingdom. Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This confession of knowing who Jesus is was a turning point in Peter's life, his ministry, and was actually the birthing of the church. Because then Jesus said to Peter, blessed or happy, spiritually mature, it says spiritually secure in the Amplified, favored by God, are you, Simon? Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you, so he's already said who Jesus is. Now Jesus is affirming Peter and saying who he is. He's saying to him, you are Peter, not the one that disowned me, not the one that keeps getting it wrong, not the simple fisherman, not the ordinary guy. You are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. At that moment, Jesus was declaring to Peter who he is, affirming who he is, no matter what he'd done wrong. And tonight, Jesus is affirming you, and he's saying to you, whatever your name is, put your name in there. You are Colin, you are Linda, you are Paul, you are Grace, you are Joseph, you are Christine, you are, and on you, I will build my church. You are Daniel, you are David, you are Claire, you are Rachel. Rachel, you are Andrew, and on you I will build my church. And then it says, 
and the gates of hell will not prevail. In other words, you'll win. How good to know ahead of time that you're going to win. But there's more. He then goes on to say, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What is released on earth is released in heaven. So first of all, we have Peter's realization of who Jesus is. I think if we can really get hold of who Jesus is, that he's the first, the last, the Alpha and Omega. He's the, he's the yesterday, today, and forever. He's the one that gives us grace and mercies every day. He's the one that not only, di- not only died to give us life eternal, but he keeps with us every day. He keeps on forgiving our sins. He keeps on healing us. He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's the one who's the lover of our soul. He's the one that's preparing a place for us in heaven. He's the one that will never leave us or forsake us. And the Bible says we are joint heirs with Jesus. As children of God, we have everything that Jesus has. So know who Jesus is. is. Number two, Peter is affirmed by Jesus who he is. So know who you are because of whose you are. Thirdly, the gates of hell will not overcome. You will be victorious. You will win. Tell, put your hand up and say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Nudge someone say, hey, you're a winner. You're a winner. You've got this. You've got this. You're a winner. But wait, there's more. You have the keys to the kingdom. He's given you the keys to the kingdom to declare what is bound on earth as in heaven and what is released on earth. Whatever has been holding you back from your miracle, we're going to lock it up once and for all and we're going to release God's blessing and God's favor and miracles. You have the same authority as Jesus. We talked about keys having a sense of authority and ownership, responsibility. When you have a key, you're a steward. But if you have your own home, if you've been given a key, you're a steward for someone else. We've been given the keys of God's kingdom. And we have all the authority that Jesus has. Sometimes we feel like we don't deserve it. Anyone like me? And you feel like maybe that authority thing is for someone else. Keys aren't something you generally see lying around, are they? Generally. They're they're precious and they're something we own and we're something we look after. Unless you're like me (laughs) and you have such a beautiful relationship with keys that you trust them to entirely look after themselves and find their way back to you miraculously every time you misplace them. I wonder how many hours have been wasted through misplaced keys or any, or the inconvenience of it. Is anyone with me? Or, or maybe you've got one of those keys that, one of those cars that you start by pushing the button and then you run back in the house with your keys to get something. You get back in the car, you drive to where you're going, and then you realize you haven't got the keys to get back again. Christine. <laughs> So I'm saying that to say that sometimes we think the authority is for someone else or we get too busy or we get distracted or we get too excited or we lose heart and we forget what we've been given. We had a really awesome couple of days in Disneyland Paris at just after Christmas time. back home for Christmas, and one of the things she wanted for our Christmas present to each other was to go to Disney. Now, we're a bit of a Disney family. We love all things Disney. Steve, bless him, had two girls and a wife who loves all things Disney, so he's just, if you can't beat him, join them. So he knows all the Disney princesses. Anyway, we, we knows all of the Disney princesses, so, especially Ariel. So we... We arrive at Disney. We're so excited, so excited. And uh, we've been given keys to the room that is the same key pass to get into the Magic Kingdom. And we arrive and a whole new world is waiting for us. And the place when you wish upon a star and, and a dream is a wish your heart made. When you're fast asleep. And, and so this whole kingdom is waiting for us. And I go up with my key. Steve goes up with his key. Melody goes up with her key. And Mercy has no key. I asked her permission to share. 
She's got her mummy's jeans for forgetting keys. <laughs> and so we're right there, ready to enter the kingdom and all that is available for us. And Merce probably thought, oh, everything's fine. And she's probably on her phone and doing some other stuff and just enjoying the journey. Because sometimes we can be a bit carefree or mum and dad will take care of that. And sometimes we need to rise up, however young or old we are in the faith, and recognize that we have been given authority and we have been given responsibility. And it's not for the people up here and it's not for your pastors and it's not for your leaders and it's not for your youth leaders. You have been given the authority to pray and see breakthrough and see change in your life, whether you've been a Christian one week or 50 years. And so Mercy had to get on the train with Steve and go all the way back to the room and get back in there and get the key so she could enter all of the opportunity. Some of us have the kingdom that God is literally, it's wide open spaces, but we're living behind closed doors and we have the keys and we're looking for someone else to open it. There's new opportunities. There's new doors. There's, there's wide open spaces. There's so much more dreams to experience. Do you know what? Jesus actually, after he spoke to Peter, in two chapters later, he speaks to all of the disciples throughout time. And he says, Matthew 18, 18, and he says, assuredly, assuredly, He's using that for emphasis. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. If two of you agree on earth, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, it shall be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered, I am there in their midst. In the Passion Paraphrase, that scripture, the first one, it says, what you forbid on earth will be considered forbidden in heaven. And what you release on earth will be released in heaven. And Jesus is the context of this. He was talking to the disciples who were arguing, who's the greatest? Who's the most spiritual? Who's the better at praying? You know, all of this conversation. And Jesus was saying, unless you become like a little child, we actually need to have very simple faith when it comes to release in our lives. Wide-eyed wonder, expectation, excitement, but yes, the authority, the sense of belonging, the sense of ownership, that we have been given the keys. What is released on earth is released in heaven. So do you know what happens then? We know who we are because we know who he is. We know that we win. The gates of hell will not prevail. We know as it is in heaven, so it is in earth. Jesus said when he taught us to pray, he said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When he taught us to pray, see, there's a close connection with heaven when we pray. There's a close connection right here when we're singing, as it is in heaven, it is in me. So you get heaven's backing. You get heaven's backing. When you go to pray, it's a bit like, and I, I, I sidetrack slightly, it's a bit like um, when, when a policeman makes an arrest. You're believing for something, and they're going to um, handcuff someone. They're binding something. It's not just his authority. It's the authority of the whole police service and the whole government and the laws of England behind him, the crown of England. When you make an arrest and say, enough is enough. I am not having this in my life. I'm going to see the doors open. I'm going to declare release over my sickness, over my body, over my finance, over my relationships. I'm going to declare release. When you do that, it's not just you. You've got all of heaven backing you. You've got all of heaven saying, there's my girl, there's my boy, there's that man, there's that woman. They've got childlike faith that are ready to believe because they know who they are, because they know whose they are. They know that they are, have all of heaven's backing. But then Jesus said here, when he spoke to his disciples, he said, the key is when you agree with someone else. Now, when I get Katie here, who's a very powerful woman of the word, and I often would talk to her, and she, we'd encourage each other. When Katie has a key, and I have a key, she knows who God is. She knows who she is. She knows she's got heaven's backing. She knows she's been given the keys. I know who God is. I know who I am. I know I've got heaven's backing. I know I've been given keys. When I join together with Katie, things happen. Miracles happen. 
Every single, thanks Katie, every single time we pray together in church and pray over those requests, I have faith to believe that miracles can happen because Jesus said, where two or three agree concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. And then it said, where two or three are gathered and there's more than two or three of us here, I am there in your midst. So the keys to release, first of all, remember who he is. Remember who you are, a child of God. You've been given permission. You've been given it. Remember that you win. You're an overcomer. The gates of hell will not prevail. Remember you are attached to heaven. You've got all of heaven backing you. Remember you've been given the keys. Remember when you join with someone else and you come to church in the power of agreement, miracles can take place. We hold back because sometimes we feel we haven't got what it takes. Sometimes we feel we've got to leave that prayer bounding, loosing thing to the prayer team. Sometimes we think you have to be so spiritually mature. He's given us the keys. If he would even give Peter the keys and he denied him, how much more is he going to give each one of us the keys, no matter what we've been through? Prayer is the breath of thriving life. It's our lifeline to the atmosphere of heaven. Our soul will flourish with it, but will suffocate and die and dehydrate and be parched without it. This week, someone gave me some beautiful tulips, and I'd been away for three days. I popped them in a cup quickly on my way to, to head out the door and forgot to put water in there. And anyone seen, just when I came back, I thought they were dead. Like they were completely lifeless. I lifted them up and the head fell back down. The stems were completely flat. So I thought, oh, I'll just try. I'll cut the ends off and put them in water, see if it works. Like three days without water. And I put them in and I literally felt God speak to me. By the end of that night, they were raising up. And by the next night, they were completely strong. And they're still completely strong standing in my kitchen. I believe the word of God would be to you. Some of you have felt like you haven't had the keys to release. You maybe haven't, not, haven't been praying for a while. And you feel like if I start praying, I think it's just too far gone. I feel too parched. I feel like God hasn't answered for a long time. I feel like dry on the inside. He's saying to you, you just bring a little breath that attaches to heaven. And it'll be like water to your soul. And in an instant, in the next couple of hours, in the next couple of days, you'll find yourself standing strong and standing tall again. You know, you might have felt sometimes like, I'm not good enough. Like, I'm a single mom, I'm a student, I'm trying to make ends meet, I'm a busy business owner, I'm a grandparent, I feel like sometimes I'm past my, my use day or sell by day, but is there still more for me? Or maybe you sometimes feel so ordinary, and, and to have influence, and you get frustrated at God, or you get frustrated, anyone get frustrated at God, or frustrated at each other, and you think all that authority stuff, I'll leave it for them. You know what? James 5.16 says, confess and acknowledge that you have offended one another and then pray for one another to be instantly healed. For tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. Tremendous power is released through the passionate, heartfelt prayer of a godly believer. And then it says, Elijah was a man with human frailties just like all of us. And he prayed and received supernatural answers. He actually shut the heavens over the land so there would be no rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again and the skies opened over the land and the rain came and produced the harvest. Finally, as members of God's beloved family, we must go after the one who wanders from the truth and bring them back. The one who's parched, the one who feels like I haven't had a release from a long time, the one who's drifting away. I texted someone last week that she felt she was drifting. She felt disappointed. She's been let down. She was longing for God. And I, I, I texted her and it was the right scripture at the right time. And she replied with tears to say, I know God is with me. There are people we've got to go and bring back and we've got to bring water to their soul and recognize that they can have release on their lives. Elijah was an ordinary man like we're ordinary and yet he prayed. Tremendous power is released through passionate, heartfelt prayer. Peter was very ordinary, but yet Jesus trusted him to build his church. Matthew 10, 8 says, freely, Freely you have received the power of the kingdom, so freely release it to others. Freely release it 
to others. Remember who he is. Remember who you are. Remember you win. Remember what you've, you have a connection with heaven. Remember what you've been given, the keys to the kingdom. Remember you are agreeing with someone else. It doubles the amount of power available. And remember when we gather, he's promised to be here. He's here right now. His presence is here now. He actually hears your heart cry. He hears those things that are going on in your head and mind right now. Yeah, I don't know if he can do that for me. He hears that. He gets it. He understands. And I believe that tonight we're going to have some of us together standing and even putting a hand on your shoulder, standing with you and believing together we're going to see release and breakthrough that can happen instantly in Jesus' name. And some of the things I'm believing for release for, first of all, a release of his spirit. At the start, I read the scripture, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus being because he's anointed me. We need his Holy Spirit to enable us to live the Christian life. We need his Holy Spirit, part of the Great Commission. When Jesus went to heaven, he said, I'll send you the comforter. I'll send you the Holy Spirit. He knew we couldn't do life on our own. And so we've got God and we've got Jesus. We've got the Holy Spirit who's our day-to-day companion who can live in us, who can enable us, who can strengthen us, who can be our greatest friend. Now, some of you have been locked, have been bound, have been held back. There's obstacles that have prevented you from receiving the fullness of His Holy Spirit. For some of you, it might be that you thought that was for days of old. For some of you, it might be, is is it weird? For some of you, it might be, am I good enough? For some of you, it might be that you just haven't had time to think about it. For some of you, it might be just nervousness of what if it happens? What if it doesn't? Whatever it is that's hindered you, I'm going to trust that tonight you'll be able to take the keys of the kingdom. And you, those thoughts and whatever it is that's held you back, you're going to lock them away once and for all. And we're going to release the Spirit of God into your life. Psalm 104 verse 30 says, When you release your spirit wind, life is created, ready to replenish life on the earth. Like those tulips coming up, your spirit wind of God will bring fresh creativity, fresh life into your relationships, fresh life into your marriage, fresh life into your relationship with Jesus that might have become stagnant. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. You will cause others to be released to the ends of the earth, Norwich, Norfolk, at the ends of the earth because you experience the release of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And who can receive that? In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, when we first see the Holy Spirit coming upon all the disciples, and they spoke with a heavenly language, and 3,000 people came to know Jesus that day. It was an incredible day at the start of the early church. And Peter gets up, this same Peter gets up and says, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, who is it to you and your children And to all who are far off, as many as the Lord will come. Whether you feel near, whether you feel far, this promise is for you. This promise is for you. And then how do we receive his Holy Spirit? We ask. And in Luke 11, it says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened. And then it goes on to say in Luke eleven thirteen. if per- imperfect parents know how to lovingly take care of their children and give them what they need, how much more will your heavenly perfect father give the Holy Spirit's fullness when his children ask him? So tonight, for release of the Holy Spirit, some of you are going to receive the Holy Spirit in a new, powerful way. And you're going to remember who he is. You're going to remember who you are. You're going to remember that you win. You're an overcomer. You're going to remember you have a divine connection with heaven. You're going to remember that you've been given the key to this situation. And you're going to remember that when someone else joins with you, there'll be great power released. And I believe many are going to be filled with His Spirit. Secondly, a release of salvation. 
Acts 13, 47 says, This will fulfill what the Lord has commanded us. I've destined you, soul church, to become a beacon light for the nations and release salvation to the ends of the earth. A release of salvation. And I declare that that release of salvation is not just going to be people coming for the first time, and it will. But tonight, I believe God's heart is for those that are coming back. For those that have once been here and the enemy is holding them back, but he's given you the key to see them released. I was reading a book a couple of years ago by John Maxwell on intentional living. And he said in there, as a means of finding your calling, he was saying, what makes you cry? And I remember thinking, what actually would make me cry? There's a few things, you know, you have those moments when you cry, but what, make, what would make me really cry? And I was sharing actually with our staff on Tuesday, the thought of Melody, my daughter Melody and Mercy, walking away from God. That brought tears to my eyes. And then I thought of four teenagers that I knew at the time that were on the fringes, that were walking away from God. People have misunderstood them. They just got busy. And I felt God say, go after them. And I'm like, they're 18. I'm... 49 this year. What are they? What are they? they uh, what? And I just really felt I needed to go to them, treat them for lunch, and listen to their dreams and encourage them and see a spark of love for God. The embers were just needed rekindling. Two of them started Bible college. One of them started coming back and, and being involved in leading youth again because I went after them. I believe God for a release of salvation. He's calling us as a church to go after those that we know that have once been here. And some of you have got children and you've cried to God for those children. This is a year of release. This is a year of release, and I'm declaring that you will, that which has, has hindered them and prevented them from coming back in the past, you will see freedom in Jesus' name. You've got the key to unlock what has been preventing them, what has been forbidding them to come back. We have a saying about going to our new building, we're coming home. We need to say they're coming home. They're coming back and speak it. I remember one time in church, there'd been a lady that, had, that I'd prayed for and, and I'd, we'd gone back to England. She'd become a Christian. She was actually a neighbor that I'd met when I was out walking one day. And I'd invited her to church. She'd become a Christian. We'd gone back to England at that time for a couple of years and we moved back to Australia again. And I asked around, where is she? I've not seen her. And they said, oh, we haven't seen her for a while. I'm like, oh, she had a real amazing encounter with God, and I lost her address. And I remember in that service that night, they asked us to write down people's names that were on our heart that we, we hadn't seen in a while. And I wrote her name down, and we prayed over these names. The very next day, I was due to go. I was working part-time as a physiotherapist then, and I, I was catching a bus to go to the, to the hospital I remember I had a coffee in one hand and a bag in the other, and I was stepping onto this bus, and as the bus pulled away, I kind of fell onto this lady's lap, and I turned and looked at her, and it was this girl. I said, you never guess what, Michelle, I put your name on a card in church last night. Like, it's not weird, but I, I came back, and I realized you're not in church, and she said, oh, my husband and I have been having problems in our marriage, and I just got distracted. I had to work extra hours at Coles at the local supermarket, which is where I'd seen her and, um, previously when I first met her, and I said, you need to come back. You need to come back. God is looking for you. He encountered, he organized this divine encounter. Because I know who I am, I know who he is, and I have a connection with heaven. And that connection with heaven connected us together. She came back to church. She, her marriage was, she went to a marriage course with her husband. Her and her whole family were water baptized because God knows her name. And just as God spoke Peter's name, he's speaking your name tonight. And he's speaking release. They're coming back, a release of salvation. Number three, a release of healing. A release of healing. Proverbs 13, 17 says, an undependable messenger causes lots of trouble, but the trustworthy and wise messengers release healing wherever they go. Speak healing wherever you go. If somebody comes up to you and they said, oh, I feel really rough. I've, I'm feeling sick. I'm, I'm feeling like I've got a bit of a cold. Stop. Pray for them. If someone says, I've got tests happening this week, pray for them. 
You've got authority as much as anyone up here has. You've been given the keys. Remember when you pray, Acts 19, 11 says, God kept releasing a flow of extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. Paul was a, a um, he was out killing Christians, but he becomes a Christian. So he's like the bin Laden of his day. And he's and like, God uses him for goodness sake to bring Christians to come to know Jesus. He can use any one of us to see miracles happen and to see breakthrough. And how do you do it? You remember who he is. You remember whose you are. You remember that you have the keys of the king. You remember you are connected to heaven. You remember you win. You remember the power of agreement when you join with someone else. You remember his presence is here. And all of those things will give you breakthrough. And I'm going to believe whatever has been restricting you. Pain. Internal pain. External pain. Some of you have gone through some emotional trauma. He's going to give you and your thoughts are running away with you going to lock up those thoughts tonight once and for all. What is bound on earth is bound in heaven. You've got all of heaven backing you as you say no to those thoughts. Some of you haven't been sleeping, as I said earlier. You're saying no to no more sleepless nights in Jesus' name. Some of you that had anxiety or depression, long-term chronic conditions, joints, I'm believing for healing tonight. As you believe for healing, remember who God is. Remember who you are. Remember you win. Remember, you've got all of heaven's backing. Remember, you have the keys to the kingdom, not someone else. You have the keys. Remember the power of agreement. Remember, his presence is here, right here, right now. We forbid pain, release healing in Jesus' name. And number four, lastly, a release of favor and peace and blessing. Colossians 1 verse 1 to 2 says, May God our Father release upon your lives the riches of his kind favor and heavenly peace through Jesus Christ, the anointed one. And then it says in Psalm 36, Lord, keep pouring out your unfailing love on those near you. Release more of your blessings to those who are loyal to you. Psalm 40 says his favor lasts a lifetime. It's not like when you ask a friend a favor, you think you might run out. Some of you feel like you've run out of God's favors. His favor lasts a lifetime. Actually says his blessing or his favor makes rich, makes your life rich and adds no sorrow. He actually wants to favor you. I noticed that for years I would write my dreams in a diary. I'm a dreamer. And I write my dreams and the call of God. And I've always got a dream and something to pursue. And I remember in the move from Australia to here recently in June, July, August, actually, we're so busy with the move. And even in this last six months, so busy with everything that we needed to do. And I felt like I was just keeping everything going and managing my emotions of Melody being overseas. And then my grandma died recently and I had a couple of weeks of flu. Do you know what? I'd forgotten to pack my dreams. I brought everything else on that long container from Australia to here. Actually, Alan challenged me once about it. We hadn't been here long. And I'd forgotten. Some of you have gone through transition. Might be marriage, change, relationships, home, sickness, moved. Whatever, we all go through transition. And some of you have left your dreams behind or you've got them packed away in a box somewhere, on a shelf somewhere. And I believe God wants to bring a release of dreams. The Acts chapter 2, when I was talking about the Holy Spirit poured out, Peter then goes on to say, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your young men and your old men will see visions and dream dreams. It's actually part of these days that we will see dream dreams. It's not, we will dream dreams. It's not self-indulgent. It's something that God has put in your heart. What makes you cry? What makes you laugh? What makes you sing? What are the gifts He's given with you, within you? I believe He's going to open doors. You know, that key that unlocks that door to that new world, a whole new world. There's so much more, so much more opportunity. Believe bigger. Believe there is more. And I wonder if just in these closing moments, I want to give each of you the opportunity to respond to that message, to say, yes, yes, yes. I want a release of healing. I want a release of 
uh, the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to see release of people coming back to Jesus. I want to see a release of favor on my life. Because it then goes on to say there's so many scriptures that talk about release. There's a release of freedom in John 8, a release of joy in 1 John, a release of strength in Proverbs 11, a release of praise and joy in Psalm 33, a release of grace in Ephesians 1, a release of forgiveness in Matthew 6, a release of the glory of His presence in Proverbs, a release of a revelation of your word, a release of abundant life. I release truth into my life. I release freedom from guilt. I release victory. I release breakthrough in Jesus' name. Can we all please stand from the front to the back? And we're going to believe right here, right now for a release of salvation for those that need to come back, for release of healing. If you need healing on your, uh, in, your, in your body, could you lift your hand up right now? Those of you that need healing for your body. Now, could we look around at those that have their hand raised? And could you, if you've got faith to believe, go up to someone and put your hand on their shoulder because we're gonna pray the prayer of agreement. We're not gonna do it at the front here tonight because he's already here in our midst. Where two or three are gathered, he's here. And right now we're gonna pray the prayer of agreement for healing. And we take those keys and we unlock we forbid pain. We unlock joints. We unlock and um, we free blood conditions. We unlock doubt and fear and guilt. And we release freedom from anxiety and depression. We release freedom and wholeness and strength and vitality and energy and strength in Jesus' name in every area because we know who we are. We know who God is. We know that we have the keys to the kingdom. We know we have all of heaven backing us. We know that we have our friends standing with us in agreement. And we believe right here, right now for miracles. That's it. Take it. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Those of you that need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you've held back, I want to see your hand as well. Can you wave at me? You want a full release of the Holy Spirit in your life. And for whatever reason I talked about earlier, you've held back and there's been a, a blockage, something that's holding you back. If that's you, I want to see your hand. You want more of the Holy Spirit or you want to be filled with God's Holy Spirit for the first time. Over here, I want you to see your hands raised. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, a couple of young men. Now, those of you that are filled with the Spirit of God and you feel um, that you have the authority, I want you to step out and put your hand on their shoulder. I want you to pray in your heavenly language. I want you to speak release into their lives in Jesus' name. What is holding you back is free right now, right here, right now. You know who you are. You know who God is. You know you've got all heaven backing you. Ask and you shall receive. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have the authority of Jesus Christ. You are good enough. You are worth it. Now I want you to start to speak out in a heavenly language that He gives you. Start to say thank you for your Holy Spirit. Flow through me. Speak through me. Love through me, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, while I'm waiting, I'm not waiting. Heaven lives in me. Those of you that need a release of favor, a release of people coming back to Jesus, can you raise your hands as well while the others are still praying? And could someone else could join together and put your hand on their shoulder? Pray a prayer of agreement. We're believing for loved ones to come back to Jesus. We're believing for the sons and daughters. We're calling them back. We're calling them back in Jesus' name. We're speaking release in their lives, a release of salvation. And we're speaking a release of favor. There will not be waiting, but this will be the year of breakthrough. This will be the year of dreams stirring up. This will be the year of creativity. This will be the year of open doors. This will be the year of dreaming again. There is more in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing together. Thanks again for tuning in. If you said the salvation prayer today, we'd love for you to email connecttofaith at soulchurch.com so we can talk a little bit more about this incredible decision that you've just made. And if at any point in the service you felt moved to give to any of our local or global initiatives, then head to soulchurch.com and click on giving at the top of the page. We're so glad you tuned in today and we hope to see you again soon. God bless.